going to call our budget meeting to order at 630. If we could all please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Chris, our mission statement. All right, at Richmond Community Schools, we provide a quality education that empowers students to be successful in a global community. I will go ahead and do roll call. Uh, Sherry? Here. Angie? Here. Sandy? Here. Kyle? Here. Jessica? Here. Margaret? Here. And I'm Christopher Ta, and we have a quorum. Excellent. Next, looking for a motion to approve the agenda as presented. So moved. Support. Support. I'll do Sherry. It's been moved and supported. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. We're going to move into our presentations, which Tammy is going to do for us this evening. The first one, fiscal year 2020 general fund final budget and fiscal year 2021 general fund original budget. I think Brian is going to screen share. Yes. Yep. There's our resolution for the 1920 final amendment. Um, the, the purpose of the meeting is to discuss our debt and operating millage rates. Um, you need to remember to mention that, um, but we'll start with the 1920 budget. Um, Okay, so you have a column that shows our original 1920, a column that shows our first amendment in December, our second amendment in February, and our final amendment today. Uh, local revenues um, are at 3.4 million in February and are decreased to 3.2 million for the end of the year. Um, there's some property tax changes that occurred um, there's like in April, they do tax value correction. So that is taken into account. Uh, transportation fees uh, decreased. Admissions um, decreased for our, both our K-12 theater, high school theater and athletics. Um, once we did our refunds for um, participation fees in the K-12 and athletics program, uh, that revenue decreased. We won't have any Camp Richmond revenue for this summer. And then there are other local revenues that decreased as well. Under state revenues, that increased about 81,000 from 11, just over 11 million to 11 million 119. And that is primarily to start with, we added a GSRP classroom in January that added about 57,000 to our GSRP allocation. Uh, we also increased our GSRP transportation allocation by 4,000. Our proposal A um, property tax categorical increased by about 22,000, which is kind of an offset to the property tax value decreasing because the taxable value plus the state aid payments is what equals our per pupil foundation. So our, our state revenue is at 11.1 million. Under federal sources, that increased 118,000. Um, again, uh, in the winter, we increased our Title I allocation was increased by 38,000. Our Title II allocation was increased by about 60,000. And we have a new um, federal program called the Coronavirus or CARES Act or ESSER allocation. There are many names for it. In total, we're getting 188,848 for Richmond schools. But we're allocating some costs um, back to the start of the um, unanticipated school closure back in March. Um, through the end of June, which is about $34,000 worth of oh, masks, um, gloves, just safety equipment that we're, we're purchasing, equipment and supplies purchasing for, uh, the, for our schools for cleaning. Oh, one of the big things is um, we purchased the Clorox 360 machines. So of the 188,000, 34,000 is, is included as the federal revenue in the 1920 final budget. Um, our IDEA grant decreased 14,000 
and that is because of a shift. Um, Macomb ISD wants to ensure that our countywide ISD allocation is fully spent. So to do that, they are taking what we used to call proportionate share out of our IDEA. They will claim that, but they will reimburse us. We're still providing the services. They will reimburse us that cost. So the, the grant money is decreasing by 14,000, but it's shifting to the next line, the inter-district sources line, which is, is increasing as you can see. In addition to the 14,000 from the federal revenue, our inter-district revenue is up about 73,000. There's 61,000 in what our local, we had previously put under local revenue. It's now under inter-district source. There's no change in the dollar value. Um, it's just a shift. So in total, our revenues go from 15.3 million is what we projected in February to 15.4 million for the end of the year, which takes our fund balance from July 1, 19. We originally projected to use 28,000 in February, and now we're using 92,000. And I know we went through many calculations as to um, what we thought that would be when we started our discussion after the mandated closure. So I want to just highlight a few things that um, Brian had included in his estimate and things that in addition um, items that we didn't include. So we he had the RAA contract settlement in there, um, loss of child care revenue in his calculation, loss of pay to participate revenue, savings in energy costs, um, increased postage costs, savings in substitute costs, bus fuel, um, supply crop costs for like non-grants. Uh, and reassigning some food general fund staff like transportation um, paraprofessionals to, from the general fund to the food service fund. Um, and then we had some savings in official costs and, and tournament fees. On top of that, um, we have an increase in our budget for 25,000 for legal fees that we did not anticipate in February. We have- um, and, and can, I inter can I interject here? Yes. Um, just on the legal fees, when we did the February budget, um, when Sarah was the president, she asked me to increase it at twenty thousand uh, dollars back in January ish, and at the time we weren't nearing our current budget. So in our February budget, we did not increase that twenty thousand dollars. There were primarily um, uh, the situation back in January, uh, that whole process plus the two grievances total about twenty five thousand dollars of expenses that were over over what we originally budgeted for attorney fees back in uh, December and actually the original budget. Thank you, Tammy. Okay. Um, we also have um, a couple staff members who are resigning, <laughs> retiring. Um, so their payout um, is about 15000 uh, We had some additional Schedule B, Schedule B costs of about 13000 um, we added benefits for a full-time position in, in, the, in the theater program. That's about 7,600. Um, we also have some additional compensation that, that we don't know what it's going to be at the end of the year. The, the contracts provide for um, sick day payout if you don't use um, your days. Also, the administration contract has um, personal and sick day payouts for unused days. And those total, by the time you add FICA retirement, it's about 30,000. So that takes, gets us you know, to this $92,000 use of fund balance. Um, we're projected to be at 74, I'm sorry, 800 and... Wait, Let me scroll down. Yes. Keep going? Yep, I'll keep going. Okay. Oh no, you, you stay, I'll, I'll keep going, sorry. Okay. <laughs> Um, so under under expenditures, um, our basic programs are increasing about fifty thousand. That's the first line, um, from seven just over seven million twelve to seven million sixty two thousand. Uh, that's primarily because of the GSRP, the additional classroom. Under added needs, uh, we've increased about twenty four thousand, and that is as a result of the additional Title One and at risk. Um, program expenses. We added revenue up above and this is the expenses going in as well. And when we get under support services, the first line is pupil support. That increased about 29,000 and that's primarily um, 
Schedule B salaries and benefits and the full-time theater benefits position that we talked about. Um, instructional staff support increased 89,000. And again, that goes back to Title I and GSRP grant increases. Under general administration, um, that increased about 14,000 and that's part of the, we had a temp person last fall when we had um, Pam was out and then we had um, salary payouts. Under school administration, that increased about 28,000. Again, that's those salary payouts that we um, didn't know what they would be until the end of the year. And then the cost on that is the FICA retirement cost on that as well. Um, under business, there was an increase of about 12,000. Most of that, or that is 25,000. That's where the legal fees are. And then there were some decreases in other areas of that budget. Under operation and maintenance, uh, it decreased about 14,000. Um, primarily that is with the coronavirus after this unanticipated school closure, we weren't fully staffed by ABM. So they are um, giving us some reductions in those purchase service costs for not having fully staffed buildings. Under pupil transportation, that didn't change from the February amendment, that's still at about 810,000. Under support services, that de decreased about 11,000. Um, that was a reduction in you know, what we thought our athletic salaries were going to be at the beginning of the year to what they are at the end. Then we also had, as we talked about many times, um, reduction in official costs and tournament fees because of the shutdown. Under uh, central, or that was central sports services, under community services, it de increased about 6,500. Um, that is primarily increases in childcare staffing costs. And then at the outgoing transfers and other transactions, there's a decrease of 21,000 there. We originally had uh, 25.5 in our GSRP equipment budget. That was actually paid for last year, so that was reduced by 21,000. So again, we're projecting, if you want to slide down a little bit, Brian. Actually, go back up to the top, I'm sorry, the prior page. Thank you. We're projecting a use of fund balance of 92,007, 92, which would bring our fund balance to 754,341. Then, Brian, do you want to go to the, yep. the summary page? Yep, summary page, or you want FY2120? Okay, we can do FY2021. We'll do this one and then we'll show you both side by side then. Yes. Here's the, here's the budget that we'll be approving for the 2021 school year. Uh, this is food service, Brian. Oh, yeah, right. you're on food service. It's testing to see if anybody is watching. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Should be a one column one. <clears throat> There we go. Okay, this just um, shows our revenues and expenses again. Um, our local revenues are based on 18 mills of property tax collections. Um, our state revenues are based on, let's see if I can find that slide, the enrollment projection. Here we go. Enrollment projection to bring our blended student count to 1,449. And our per pupil foundation, we've assumed a reduction of $700 per pupil to make that 7,411. Um, that's all included grants, federal grants. We um, in, kept them from where they have been. They're at their revenue and expenses at their current levels. And then inter-district sources um, is a new item. I'm drawing a blank what that is. Part of it is, oh, I do know what that is, I'm sorry. Interdistrict sources is the money we're going to receive from Macomb ISD for the new um, enhancement millage that was approved by our voters in Macomb County. Um, so that interdistrict sources is a much bigger number in the past that's been, you know, the amended budget was 73,000, now it is 645,000. Um, our projected start of the fiscal year fund balance will be 718,000. We basically have a balanced budget, um, which would bring our fund balance. We have 527 more revenues than expenditures, and we'd bring our projected fund balance a year from now, July 1 of 2021, to 718,821.
under expenditures, uh, we've talked so many nights and um, about what our expenditures were going to be. Um, I just want to let you know that our, these expenditures on this page that total 14835334 reflects um, the state increase in the retirement rate of 2.58%, um, increase in our 2020 state health insurance caps, which is increasing 3.3%. We handled the staffing levels as has been presented. We reduced a total of um, two teaching positions. Um, we reduced some special sections we had a reduction in the school administration of one position. We eliminated the voc ed EMT program costs. Um, we had some reductions in the schedule B programs, um, changes in um, how we do the theater program, but you know, the program's still there, it'll just be different. Um, we reduced curriculum materials. Our long-term technology replacement was eliminated for next year. Uh, we eliminated summer school in the budget. Um, we shouldn't have any election costs. We aren't planning to do any bus replacements out of the general fund next year. And then we reduced other capital outlay where we had um, uh, tables, improvements at the high school. Those are, are eliminated out of the budget. We've also reduced Board of Education expenditures in the management services line. Um, we had a temporary person, so that's been reduced and we um, reduced advertising to about half, I believe. Um, other areas of the budget are at current levels, um, electricity, natural gas, bus fuel supplies, current levels meaning what they were in the original 1920 budget before the mandated school closure. Um, so with that, with those expenses totaling 14,835, um, we would take our fund balance to about 5.09% of revenues and our early warning um, equity, fund equity percentage, we'd be about 6.47%. So Brian's gonna skip down to the bottom. So you, you should have in your board packet a summary page that talks about what the actual was in six of 2019, the original in 20, the final that Tammy just presented in 20, and then the new 21 budget. And I'm gonna scroll down to the last page, which talks about the early warning language as well as fund balance. Okay, so we closed the year um, for 1920. We're looking at a fund balance percentage of 4.88%. So that's a little lower than what we've had. We've been above five. Um, it should get back up to 5% next year, assuming our assumptions are good. Um, the early warning fund percentage would be 6.21% at the end of this year and increase to 6.47% next year. And then there's comparisons of salaries and benefits. You can see um, salaries are down from 7.7 .7 million to 7.3 million. Um, benefits are down even with increased costs in retirement and um, health insurance increase in those rates that we pay. Um, that's down about uh, 40,000. Uh, purchase services also decreased, um, supplies decreased, capital outlay decreased, um, other areas of the budget decreased, other expenses, you know, anything that isn't classified in the other categories. So again, it takes our expenses um, in this year, 15.539 million to 14.835. And then you can see in the last section how it is spent as far as purpose. So instructional programs still um, is, you know, gets the most of our money where it should go, um, 8.5 million. Support services, what, 6.1 million. And then community services, 124,000. I don't know if you have anything to add, Brian, if there are any questions on the general fund. Um, can I just throw in there just to be clear, Tammy and Brian, when we're talking about this budget for next year, um, reduction of two teachers, we had a retirement and then a teacher that we um, have to reduce due to budget issues. I just kind of want to make that clear that, that the reduction is because we had a teacher that retired yeah, and a layoff is only one. It will be one layoff and then there will be, depending on the schedules, we have some part-time schedules that teachers may get. So if they choose the layoff, they could, okay. um, depending on the schedule. But you are right, because okay. of the retirement, 
we don't have to lay off two full-time teachers. It's only one. Um, okay. I just wanted to make, yeah. just that, put it out there, just that it was understood by whoever's listening yes. what so, exactly that meant. Thank you, Mary. One position through attrition and one layoff, yes. Yeah. Anybody else have any questions or comments? Okay. All right. Thank you for that work, Tammy and Brian. Are we ready to move on to the next one? Yes. Yes. Okay. Next, fiscal year 2020 debt fund final budget and fiscal year 2021 debt fund original budget. Um, okay, so there isn't a lot of change in the debt fund um, as far as property tax collections from the original budget to the end of um, final budget. Um, there's always adjustments in property tax value so that um, property tax collections are at $2,954. Um, delinquent taxes, we, it's just kind of a guess what that is going to, you know, what we're going to collect. We're at $9,172. Um, interest income, 8730 As you know, interest rates drops, dropped considerably, um, so our interest revenue is down. And then there's a new line called Proceeds from Sale of Bonds, um, $391,000. That was money we received when we closed on the 2020 bonds that were approved back in November, um, and that was um, intentionally put in to help us pay our first uh, debt payment on the 2020 bonds. So um, this year, we're our revenues will be 3.3 million. Um, we're starting at a fund balance of 367 from last July 1st, and we'll be increasing that 483,000 and bringing that to 850,000. So if you move to the next column to the right, to the original budget for 2020, 2020, 2021, our property tax collections are up to 3.8 million. And that is because we go from 5.5 mills on pro all properties um, to 6.95 mils on all properties in the district. So that is that 1.45 mil increase that was approved by voters last November. Um, delinquent taxes, again, uh, still guessed at 4,000 and interest income, we just continued that number 8,730. We will, we're not expecting any proceeds from the sale of bonds. Uh, so our total revenue for next year uh, is 3.8 million, just under 3.9 million. Um, we'll start with the projected fund balance of 850,000, using up 447,000 to take our fund balance a year from now to about 403,000. Um, so if Brian goes down to the next page, we'll go through what, how we're spending that money. Um, so this year, our repayment of principal, um, this is my favorite budget because, you know, all those bond payments are scheduled out for me. So um, it's very easy to be on track for that. So our repayment of principal remains at 2215000 Our interest payments are just under $660,000. Um, we always estimate some kind of taxes abated that if there's, you know, someone goes to the tax tribunal, we may have to pay some money back at 2000 And then we pay fees for people to make our, we send them a large amount of money and then they send that out to all of the bondholders. Um, so that fee is 3500 So our total appropriated for debt is 2880166 for the 1920 year. And in the right hand column, the original budget for 2021, again, we have our scheduled principal payments of 2,080,000. Um, we have our interest, interest payment on our 2020 bonds. Um, so that brings our interest payments up significantly. Um, we're up to two point, just under 2,250,000 in interest. Um, taxes and fees remain the same. So our total appropriated for next year is 4,335,347. And again, that, that increase of 1.45 in our debt millage um, to 6.95 mills is allowing us to make these payments as required. Are there any questions on the debt fund? Okay, looks like none. We're gonna move on to the next item, fiscal year 2020 food service final budget and fiscal year 2021 food service original budget. So the, normally the food service budget isn't quite as easy to predict as the debt fund, but it is 
usually pretty consistent, pretty steady. The unanticipated school closure kind of um, made some changes for us. So we'll start with food sales, the first line in the middle column for 1920. We originally thought it would be just under 250,000. It's actually at 210,000. Um, state reimbursements, we get money from the state under 31D, which is, I believe, part of the at-risk. Um, that's decreased to 20,264. Um, federal reimbursements, you'll see that's up to 366,536. It was 218,500. The reason it is up is we've been doing the unanticipated school closure program meals since March, uh, when we start that March 18th? Yes, March 18th is the first. Um, so we've we've been doing that and that is a federal reimbursement to us so that is what has increased that significantly to 366,000. And just so you know as of today we served over 65,000 meals since March 18th. Wow. Um, it's a lot. We're still serving um, over, you know, close to 200 a day. Our US commodity entitlement dollars we don't know what that's going to be until the final report comes out. Um, I estimated at 34,547, which was the amount we had last year. Um, and there's the dollar, the revenue and the expense equals. So, it, you know, we, we try to get it right, but it, it's whatever the revenue is, that's what the expense will be. Interest earnings 730. Total revenues projected for 1920 are 632,420. Um, if you go to the right-hand column and look at original 2021, we've kind of reset back to a normal school year budget, um, looking at around 245,000 in food sales, uh, state reimbursements of about 26,000, federal reimbursements of about 216,000, um, commodity entitlement the same, and interest earned the same, which would bring our total, total revenue to 522,484. Um, our fund balance, uh, as of the close of last, last June 30th, we are at 106,000. Um, if we're able to add 1766, we'll be at 108,010 um, as of June 30th, 2020. And, and we're projecting a balanced budget for the 2021 year, so that, <clears throat> that 108 would remain in place. And that fund balance is important because if you recall, we purchased um, a walk-in freezer, stoves we've purchased a lot of equipment out of this fund and not the general fund over the last two years yes it is it is great to have a self-sufficient food service fund um, our expenditures also look a lot different because of the unanticipated school closure um, bless you our salaries and benefits uh, went from 270,000 to about 303. And again, that is redeploying staff out of the general fund into the food service fund. Um, that's salaries and benefits. Our food costs are about 234,000. Again, up significantly because we're selling a lot of meals, or producing a lot of meals, not selling them, but getting reimbursed by the feds. Uh, paper cleaning products at about 22,000. Other purchase services are at 28,000. That includes training for our staff, that includes um, repairs that we have done on our, on our equipment. And we've replaced equipment because it's aging, we have more replacement to do. Um, other expenses and transfers are at 2440. Capital outlay, there's one of our replaced equipment, 5,833. And there's our um, commodity entitlement expenditure, 34,547 which brings our total expenditures for 1920 to 630,654. Um, when you go to the 2021 budget, again, we've tried to reset back to what a normal school year would look like. Um, a year ago, we, had, we took our food service manager out of the instruction side, so they're entirely food service, so that's why you see that increase to 287 in salaries and benefits. Um, food costs are 167 paper and cleaning at 27. Um, purchase services are back down to the normal amounts, 5,500. Expenses and transfers, 5,400. Um, USD commodity at 32. Um, total appropriated, 522,484. That number, that USDA commodity number should match what's up above. So that'll be an adjustment we make when we have to do an amendment. Sorry about that. Any questions on food service? Okay, thank you. We're gonna move on next. Fiscal year 2020 student school activity fund final budget. 
and fiscal year 2021 student school activity fund original budget? Uh, there's a new GASB that came out and it was supposed to be effective for 1920 and it was how we handle our student activity internal accounts. Um, that GASB has been pushed off. So what we originally adopted in uh, a year ago in June of 19 for 1920 has been zeroed out and put into the 2021 year. So we will implement that and it'll give us, gives us a little more time to, um, the internal accounts are pretty much set. We went through those, um, but there's also things to change when it comes to our like golden apple scholarship, how that should be handled. So this will give us time to go into that. Um, so clearing out any budget for 1920 and putting that 300,000 in revenues and expenditures back for 2021. Any questions on that one? No, all right, we'll move on to the final one, state aid note loan cash flow borrowing. Okay, every year we borrow for cash flow. Um, this helps us make do our payroll while our state aid payments catch up to our expenses. Um, it's pretty standard format. Uh, last year we borrowed 1.3 million. Um, Brian goes to the appendix A. It should be the seventh page in. And you'll see that uh, this year we're asking to borrow an amount not to exceed 1,535,000. Um, that is, we did a couple of scenarios as far as you know where our cash flow will be if this happens and that happens. And this is the most conservative scenario. So it would be the scenario where we borrow the most. Um, the closing on the, on the note isn't until August. So we have some time to adjust that number. It won't go higher, but it could be lower. Um, so we're asking to um, approve uh, an amount not to exceed 1,535,000. And this is the state aid note program through the state. We work with Troon Law. They do a lot of their names on everything. They do a lot of the paperwork for us and help us um, review our calculation for cash flow and make sure we're, we're within legal limits in our borrowing. I don't know if you have anything to add, Brian, or any questions. So this is the importance of having that fund balance. And, and I know all of you know that because the more you have in your fund balance, the less you're going to have to borrow because you'll have more cash on hand to accommodate payrolls and so forth, so. Uh, and it, it, it's based on, the cash flow is based on our budget. So if our budget you know, comes in better, we may not have to borrow as much. Whatever we know between now and the date we have to determine the amount we can factor in. Um, if things come in worse than, and then budget, which I hope it doesn't, um, there are not things we can do if we need to um, borrow more for cash flow. But right now, this is what we're asking for. Hopefully this will be the, all we have to ask for. Any questions? Okay, thank you, Tammy. Uh, now, now it's the part of our meeting for public comment. If there's anyone who would like to address the board, they can do so. You have three minutes to speak. While it is not a question and answer period, if you have a question you would like answered by the board, uh, usually it, when we do our regular meetings, there is a piece of paper where you can leave your name and phone number, but you can um, submit your name and phone number for an answer for your question to me at mtelto at richmond.k12.mi.us. Is there anyone who would like to address the board? I am unmuting everybody, so if anybody has something. I got no hand waving, anybody? Okay. Okay. Looks like no one would like to address the board. So I am going to adjourn our budget hearing at 7.04 p.m. And if board members are good, we'll just move into the next meeting. Does that work, everybody? Yes? For me. Okay. All right. Then I'm going to call our regular Board of Education meeting together at 7.04 p.m. If we could all please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America 
and to, and the, to the republic for which it stands, stands one, nation, one nation, under God, under God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and justice, and justice for all. For all. Margaret, I have a question. If we move right into this, the um, the seven o'clock meeting has its own. If people want to join, it has its own number. No, it doesn't. That was that was changed on Friday. Oh, is that okay? Gotcha. Yep, yep. Got we it. changed it on Friday, so we didn't have that issue of okay. people having to close out and go into a new meeting. So we're good. Okay. Okay. Uh, moving on, our mission statement, Chris. At Richmond Community Schools, we provide a quality education that empowers students to be successful in a global community. I'll move to roll call. Sherry? Here. Angie? Here. Sandra? Here. Kyle? Here. Jessica? Here. Margaret? Here. And I am Chris. We have a quorum. Excellent. Thank you. Looking for a motion to approve the agenda as presented? So moved. Support. Okay, was that Angela and Chris? Yes. Yep. Yep. Okay, it's been moved and supported. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next, looking for a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented. So moved. Kyle and Chris, it's been moved and supported. Any discussion? Mr. Walmsley? Uh, we have uh, two employees, uh, Jackie Washer Cabbage, who is retiring. Uh, Jackie was, has served in roles as child care as well as our food service. Um, and Secretary to the Principal, Susan Rickert, is resigning effective uh, June 12th. Um, and there is one layoff, but that will be noted later on in the agenda also. Okay. Okay, it's been moved and supported. All those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next, our bond update. Update, elementary school addition and renovations. Okay, I have uh, Jerry McCullough. Jerry's here, can you hear us, Jerry? Yep, I'm here, Brian. All right, I'm gonna, we're gonna talk a, a update on the, um, the field turf, and then the majority of the conversation will be on the elementary uh, additions that we talked about. Um, almost a month and a half ago it seems at the beginning of I think beginning of May we did them so Jerry I'll turn it over to you yeah so I uh, think Brian uh, with uh, things getting back a little bit to normal we have our field turf contractor slated to start Wednesday he'll be building the protective ramp over uh, the track and uh, he'll start to actually rototilling uh, the turf up uh, that's there and he'll, he'll begin moving really moving dirt next week so uh, we're excited to get that project uh, rolling and kicked off. Um, you will see some signs. Uh, I think uh, Kevin Quain, our superintendent, may have already started putting them up uh, so that the public knows that the track, the running track, will be closed uh, during the duration of, the, of that project. Uh, so that those will be up. But uh, we're excited to get that rolling and get that going and, and get it done uh, in time for the season. Uh, I'm sorry, Jerry, excuse me. Did you say next week? Uh, yeah, actually, Wednesday. Wednesday of this week, he will start uh, putting the uh, protective ramp that goes across the track. The actual okay. equipment is going to hit the site next week and start moving dirt next week. Okay, thank you. And uh, with uh, Lee Elementary, as Brian mentioned, we did talk a, a while ago about uh, the number of, of bids uh, that we were, we were going out for. And I think Brian reported back that we did have good coverage. Uh, we had 106 proposals. Uh, from those proposals, we were able to recommend uh, the low responsive bidders, uh, which, which I believe you all have in your packet. Uh, the good news is, is that even with the air conditioning uh, as designed that we were concerned with, we are on budget. Uh, we are within within the parameters of the bond that was put together that, that uh, the public voters passed. Uh, so we were able to get you a little bit more. Um, and that was done through the design team looking at some, some creative ways of, of, uh, of taking care of some things. But uh, we're able to get everything on the list, including the air conditioning, on budget. Unfortunately, uh, we did have a, a, a desire to replace that folding partition 
in the in the uh, gym and auditorium area, uh, the, the uh, cafeteria area. That we are not recommending at this time. However, the contractor that is low has uh, guaranteed his price through December. And what's important about that is if we get through the bidding of the other projects and we come in with uh, uh, favorable bids on those as well, we may be able to consider that later down the road. But as it sits right now, everything is in. Uh, we, we do have two local contractors that we are recommending, which we're, we're always uh, happy and proud to do. And then also over half of the proposals are gonna be awarded to Macomb County contractors. Um, and that's always important for us to get the local involvement. Uh, so uh, with that, Brian, I guess, is there anything else you wanted me to cover? You, can you go over, uh, I'll, I'll ask the board, do you want a kind of a short synopsis of the proposals so you understand what the scope of those proposals are? Um, we, I mean, I know we talked about a month and a half ago, but I, I know things have changed and sometimes this isn't on your forefront of your mind, but uh, because you're going to be approving a lot of money tonight. And I want to make sure you guys are comfortable with um, what you're approving. As Jerry said, um, it is a low bid. There, I was part of probably about half of the interviews, Jerry, that I physically was at because it was also yep. during graduation. Um, it's an intensive process. They go through to vet the, the, the contractors to make sure they understood the bid, to make sure they, they, um, there's any changes to the bid in the process. They recognize it and... and to validate their price that they quoted so that we don't have problems later on. Uh, it was, our, our goal is we don't want change orders or we want to minimize them. And we're not going to eliminate them because we don't know what's behind those walls, but um, we want to get as much work done on the front end as possible to help uh, save us a lot of headaches later on. So I guess I'll leave it up to, to you as a board if you, if you want any more information about the different proposals, because uh, I believe there's a little over 20 of them that you're going to be approving tonight. Or requested approve. My thought is, it, it, this is very important. This is the, the biggest step we're gonna we're take in this huge process that we're doing. Um, I don't know what the rest of the board thinks. Does it behoove us to do it as we get to each one to talk a little bit about what that project that's going to happen in the company that we're choosing, or do we do we want a overview of everything before we delve into that? I think it'd be easier if we did each one because um, then it's fresh in our mind to look at them but I know that's time consuming too. Each, each one is through the action item or each one now? It, I, my thoughts were an overview of everything that we're getting into or as we're going to each one we're we're approving a bid on this particular work. This is what this work is going to encompass. I think as a board, we, we should be well aware of what these companies are doing and what part of the project they're working at. So I'm just asking what everybody else would like to, to do. I mean, when we make, when we vote on things, usually we get, we've either already had a presentation on them or we have some kind of conversation as we vote. I would be okay if they had like a summary or, or something, a recap before we voted. Right now, ahead of time or as we do as each As we one? went through each action item. Will, I, think, uh, I think that works. Does yeah, that work I for agree. you, Gary? Yes, yeah, sure. I, I could okay. go through that, uh, Margaret. The, the, uh, the packet that you received with the recommendation letter um, is assembled kind of in that way. So, so let, me, let me just go through. Uh, so, so as you see, uh, in the packet, each wait, wait, trade. Wait, Jerry, so hold on. Wait, guys, were we talking about as we got to each item that we're going to vote on? Right. I thought so. Yes. Oh, I was so just going to. I was I'm just going to sorry, mention go of, of the twenty-four. Oh, I'm a sorry. Little, go ahead. Yeah, a little description each in each one uh, that also has the address, name, everything of the contractor that's awarded, and then Correct. all of the other things. So that that packet kind of is your guide. Uh, for a lot of the, the questions that you, you would have that we can get to when we get there. Um, but I wanted to give an overview that, that we are looking at trade, what we call trade contractors, but in, in, in a correct term, they are contractors because they will be directly contracting with Richmond schools. Um, but the total is uh, about 5.7, 5.6 and change million dollars of contracts of the 24 proposals uh, that will be acted on tonight. Uh, 
So with that, I did want to step back and, and mention what Brian had mentioned. Each one of these, uh, we did have a, a Zoom pre-bid meeting uh, that the contractors were all invited to and, and many of them did attend. Uh, then we, we also had a uh, scheduled walkthrough. Uh, we, as you know, we were doing this under the, uh, you know, still under the state home orders. Construction was allowed, uh, but we were still social distancing and we limited the number of folks. Uh, so we didn't have the normal walkthrough that we had. Uh, however, every contractor that wanted to was given an opportunity to walk and, and Brian actually uh, escorted a, a handful of the contractors with uh, Colleen Kofel and myself. Uh, so we did a, a walkthrough um, and, and uh, then when we did the opening, the bid opening and the unique part of this one was it was a Zoom bid opening. Uh, and, and I think we actually had more participation from the trade contractors dialing into the Zoom meeting. And it's something that, that we, our company is looking at in the future of how do we take what we've learned with this and, and maybe do some things in the future with this technology to, to open up. Uh, uh, so those that, that maybe can't make it across, uh, you know, or, or over to the, the board meeting for her boardroom for a, a bid opening can uh, participate. So we did have a, a good participation there. Uh, the bid opening went quite well. Uh, I did get uh, a bottle of water from Brian. I was uh, reading a lot of numbers and uh, it, it did. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so, um, but anyway, that's kind of an overview of, of, of where we are with, with the process. Those post bid interviews that Brian mentioned is very critical to us that you'll, you'll note that, that uh, in the letter, there was a contractor that didn't note addendum one. And we, we caught that immediately and talked to him and he withdrew his bids. Um, we did also have some other just clarifications as we came through to confirm that the low bidders were responsive and understood the scope of what was in the project. And, and Brian, as mentioned, uh, sat through many of those. And, uh, and Colleen Kofel, uh, the project manager, she, she leads that effort and, and she will be the one dealing directly with the contractors. And uh, that's something that we actually incorporate with uh, the contract uh, with with the trades that 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 post bid you said you understood this and we, we don't have misunderstandings down the road so uh, it's a very important process and when we do these um, I, I know the, the process seems like uh, you know so, some folks would like to see the bids immediately like we bid on the fourth and you met on the eighth in order to do that process does take us a little bit of time and in the future, I would like to talk a little bit about how maybe we do this because uh, we will have some bids coming up in the fall so that we can have the time uh, to, to make sure that you are comfortable uh, because we will actually have more uh, dollars in, in contracts in the fall when we bid the middle school and high school. Uh, so I guess that, does that cover it, Brian, for, for now for the overview? Yes, yes. I think that's it. Exciting. This is very exciting for us. Thank you. It's it's very exciting. Does anybody have any questions just first before we start with the, the overview that we just got from Jerry? Or comments? Okay. One other update I did want to give Brian was that we, we did receive our comments back from the Bureau of Fire Safety and uh, the good news is they, they really didn't have too much to uh, add to the plan so we got approval and we're, we're, we're good to go with the fire marshals so uh that that's very good news that that's that's back ahead sometimes those those lag a little bit with the state and we we're, we're actually really pushing to get that here we have it in, in good time so mr walmsley no, yep. Thank you. No, we're good. We're good. Um, Mr. Walmsley, excuse me, before we go on, we have, nope, we're good there too. Okay, forget it. I'm going to move on. Jerry, thank you. Um, we're going to move on to our public comment portion of our meeting where if someone would like to address the board, they may do so. You have three minutes to speak. If you have a question that you would like answered by the board, usually you could leave your name and phone number on a sheet of paper, but since we are meeting virtually, you can send that question, your telephone number, name and phone number to me at mtelto at richmond.k12.mi.us. And if there is something that we need to address, we will. 
Um, you have three minutes to speak. Is there anyone who would like to address the board? Okay, I've hit the unmute all. So if people are muted, they have, they muted themselves. So anybody can speak at this time. Nobody? All right, I'm gonna hit the mute all and I gotta go back and undo the board members. So just give me a couple seconds here. Okay, I think that's everybody. I think that's everybody. Okay. Okay, we're going to move on to superintendent legislative update. Uh, I'm going to start with the legislative update. Um, the, um, well, we got no news today from the legislators, though at my, during my superintendent's call and our conversation with the Macomb County legislative liaison, um, there's, they believe that they, we will not be prorated this year um, though they don't come back until the end of July to would act on anything um, we're just crossing our fingers on that one but all all indications indicate that we will not be prorated this year we have not heard the official per pupil cut and there's still that range that that that's out there so um, we'll see uh, on that aspect um, as far as the school update um, we have, since we last met, um, we've officially closed school, report cards have gone out. Um, we have uh, conducted our graduation uh, ceremony. Uh, I do want to thank the team, uh, and there's many people who participated, who helped with that graduation ceremony. Um, we received a lot of positive comments. That was our, our goal, is to provide an experience for each graduate. The, the best we could do given the circumstances, and I think each one had their own individual graduation, and I think there was a lot of pleasant families leaving. So um, I did talk with the videographer today, and he anticipates by the end of the week, uh, he should have the finished copy. He's gonna send me a draft copy earlier, but um, finished copy by the end of the week so that the parents and, and community members will be able to see the graduation ceremony. So, um, other than that, that's all I have. Next, items of interest from members of the board. Does anybody have anything? I also uh, just kind of wanted to mirror what Brian said. I uh, just wanted to thank everybody who was part of the graduation ceremonies. I was able to be there and I thought that they were uh, really good. And I think that they were really um, well received by all the parents and even the students. And, um, you know, a lot of people worked real hard to get that together and whatnot. And I just want to say thank you to those people. and. Um, I think that, you know, everybody did a real good job putting that together, actually. I think most of the families, all, I, don't, I don't think there was any families that, didn't, that seemed uh, disappointed about it. So that was nice to see. I would agree. I think that the um, really cool thing was like how pumped up everyone was when they got in there. They were so excited and they were like just, just so thankful to be able to celebrate their grads. So I think that was really cool. And kudos to the people who were pumping them up before they came out there as well. <laughs> they really did their job to represent Richmond very well. And so it was uh, just super fantastic to be able to celebrate. I agree, it was a, a good experience, I think for everybody. And I'm excited to see the video. Um, that I think the finished product is really gonna be when it's all put together an amazing thing. So thank you to everybody who worked so hard all weekend. Absolutely. and and the hours before and after. I mean, it was way more than any of us did. Obviously, we showed up and, and shook hands, but uh, the hours and the days uh, beforehand and the prep, uh, just a fantastic job all the way around. Um, and I just want to give kudos for graduation to Sandy. Um, it was four days and she was the board member who was able to be there every single day for us to represent, so appreciate that. Um, some of us had family obligations, work, other things, but um, we appreciate you, Sandy, that you got there every single day 
and um, just 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 as a board member, it really was a very very cool experience. Um, families got to have their own personal private graduation, and I, I think it was just an outstanding job. Um, so kudos to Mr. Walmsley and the high school staff and everybody that put that together. Um, I want to shout out to our custodial staff who worked that weekend, Dar and Robert and Vanessa and Martha. They donated their time to the graduates to be there to keep everything clean, keep everything healthy and safe for our families. So that is just outstanding. Uh, those are some great people who we are very fortunate to have work for us. Um, something I've been meaning to say for a few weeks, but a shout out to Toits in town that uh, painted their cement mixer with our Blue Devil logo. I don't know if everyone has seen it, but if you drive by 32 Mile Road, um, it's very, very cool. Um, it's just a great uh, advertisement for our district and just a really neat thing for a business in town to support our school district. So thank you to um, to them and they contacted Mr. Walmsley and asked if they could do it and my goodness, why wouldn't we say yes? So thank you to them. Um, and my last thing I just want to address at our last board meeting, we did have public comment. Haley Fortuna, who uh, is a graduate, Richmond graduate, spoke to the board about um, looking for the school district with what is going on in the world right now with respect to um, equality amongst all people. And um, she, she is looking for the school district to see if we could do some things to educate our students um, on all things in life. And I just want to uh, let everyone out in the viewing public know, Haley had a, um, a peaceful protest last week um, through town and there was a little bit of a misconception that that was being held because she came to the Board of Education and asked us to change our curriculum and we ignored her request. Uh, Haley coming to the Board of Education, making her statement had nothing to do with the peaceful protest that she put on in town last week. So I just want to make that clear. And I have spoken to her. Mr. Walmsley is going to sit down with her. We're going to listen to what she has to say and see what kind of things we can do here at Richmond Schools. So um, Haley, thank you for your thoughts and uh, we wish you well. That's it for me. Anybody else? Okay, we're going to move on to our action items. Approval of fiscal year 2020 general fund final budget and fiscal year 2021 general fund original budget. Uh, we had our presentation at our last meeting. There is a sample resolution. I motion to accept the recommendation of the superintendent and approve the fiscal year 2020 general fund final budget amendment and the fiscal year 2021 general fund original budget as presented in the attached documentation. Support. It has been moved and supported. Is there any discussion? Other than thank you to Brian and Tammy for the work that they have put in putting this together and for fellow board members, it's been a long road. It's been a tough budget process, um, but we're here, we're doing it, and hopefully some good things might come down the road for us that will make our budget look better. Um, I'm gonna do a roll call vote. Chris. Aye. Angela. Aye. Sandy. Aye. Sherry. Aye. Jessica. Aye. Kyle. Aye. And I vote aye. Motion carries. Next, approval of fiscal year 2020 debt fund final budget and fiscal year 2021 debt fund original budget. Again, we had our presentation at our budget hearing just a few minutes ago. There's a sample resolution. I motion to accept the recommendation of the superintendent and approve the F. FY 2020 debt fund final budget amendment and the FY 2021 debt fund original budget 
as presented in the attached documentation. Support. It has been moved and supported. Any discussion? Hearing none, I'll do a roll call. Kyle. Aye. Chris. Aye. Sandy. Aye. Jessica. Aye. Sherry. Aye. Angela. Aye. And I vote aye, motion carries. Next, approval of fiscal year 2020 food service fund final budget and fiscal year 2021 food service fund original budget. Again, we had this presentation a few minutes ago at our budget meeting. There's a sample resolution. I motion to accept the recommendation of the superintendent and approve the FY 2020 food service fund final budget amendment and the FY 2021 food service fund original budget as presented in the attached documentation. Or it has been moved and supported. Any discussion? Hearing none, I'll do a roll call. Jessica. Aye. Kyle. Aye. Angela. Aye. Sherry. Aye. Sandy. Aye. Chris. Aye. And I vote aye. Motion carries. Next, approval of fiscal year 2020 student school activity fund final budget and fiscal year 2020 2021 student school activity fund original budget. Again, we had our presentation at our budget hearing. There's a sample resolution. A motion to accept the recommendation of, of the superintendent and approve the FY 2020 student school activity fund final budget and the FY 2021 student school activity fund original budget as presented in the attached documentation. Support. It has been moved and supported. Any discussion? Hearing none, I'll do a roll call vote. Jessica. Aye. Angela. Aye. Kyle. Aye. Chris. Aye. Sherry. Aye. Sandy. Aye. And I vote aye, motion carries. Next, approval of state aid note loan cash flow borrow, borrowing. Again, we had our presentation at our budget meeting. There's a sample resolution. A motion to accept the recommendation of the superintendent and approve the resolution authorizing issuance of notes in anticipation of state school aid for up to 1535000 through the Michigan Finance Authority State Aid Note Program as presented in the attached documentation. Support. Been moved and supported. Any discussion? Okay, um, I think that needs to be amended to 1,535 1, million. I didn't hear you say million. Did I miss it? No, he said 1,535,000. Oh, okay. Right, Kyle? Isn't yeah, that is what I said. said. Okay. Right. <laughs> yeah, keeping us all on our toes. There we go. Okay. All right. Um, it has been moved and supported. Any other discussion? <laughs> Hearing none, I'll do a roll call vote. Kyle. Aye. Sherry. Aye. Sandy. Aye. Jessica. Aye. Chris. Aye. Angela. Aye. And I vote aye. Motion carries. Next, approval of exempt and non-union individual contracts. Mr. Walmsley, do you want to say anything to this? These contracts are um, a no increase, and I would respectfully ask the board that if our financial situation differs and there's a change, what we offer other individuals, that these individuals also be considered as a collective group. Uh, these are all non-union. They don't belong to any bargaining unit. Um, there are a couple members that were bus drivers that should be at the, there's a two tiered rate um, that we have. So we'd be moving just those two um, after they finish. They basically were new bus drivers on a probationary period. Um, but we're maintain, maintain everything as is from the 1920 school year. You have the employment contracts in, the, in your packet. Um, it, the only thing is dates and um, have been changed on them. Everything else remains the same in them. There's a sample resolution. 
I motion to accept the recommendation of the superintendent and approve the individual contracts and salary or hourly rate pay for central office exempt and non-union employees for the 2020-2021 school year as presented in the attached documentation. Support. Been moved and supported. Is there any discussion? No? Okay. It's been moved and supported. All those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Next, approval of 2020-2021 MHSAA membership, membership resolution. This is what we do every year. Mr. Walmsley? Uh, just that um, we agreed to abide by the rules and regulations of the MHSAA, which allows our teams to, to participate in post-season uh, playoff and, and championship games. So it's, as you said, it's something we do every year. Um, that we will abide by the, the rules of the MHSA. There's a sample resolution. A motion to accept the recommendation of the superintendent and approve the Michigan High School Athletic Association MHSAA membership resolution for the 2021 school year as presented in the attached documentation. Support. It has been moved and supported. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next, approval of preventative maintenance agreement. Mr. Walmsley? This is the agreement we've done for the last um, three or four years with uh, Metro Controls. They do all the service and maintenance on our uh, unit events, particularly our new one, changing filters, repairs, cleaning, et cetera. Um, they've agreed to lock in the price um, for three years, if the board's willing to uh, commit to a three years, you would be imp you would be authorizing this every year in June. Um, but my recommendation would be lock in. We we do not have in-house staff to maintain um, our HVAC. That's why we contract the service, and they have done a, um, in my estimate, a remarkable job. Um, they're very timely in their responses, as well as. Um, you know, it will it will help keep our, our, our equipment long lasting. So there's a sample resolution. I motion to accept the recommendation of the superintendent and approve a contract for thirty one thousand one hundred forty dollars with Metro Controls Inc. for preventative maintenance, for which funding from the 2020-2021 general fund is authorized as presented in the attached documentation. Support. It has been moved and supported. Any discussion? Other than I called Brian and I just asked the agreement refers to us as Richmond Public Schools. So I asked him that before he signed everything, it, it's changed to Richmond Community Schools because we're not Richmond Public Schools. Okay, it has been moved and supported. I'll do a roll call vote. Kyle. Aye. Sherry. Aye. Jessica. Aye. Sandy. Aye. Chris. Aye. Angela. Aye. And I vote aye. Motion carries. Next, approval, approval of web control support agreement. Mr. Walmsley. This agreement is the, uh, the web system that we use to manage our, it keeps the um, latest, uh, as you know, when you buy it, a, a piece of software, oftentimes there's an upgrade and you gotta pay the upgrade if you want the latest version. Um, if we agree to the three-year commitment, they'll actually reduce the price, which would save us about $2,000, plus any normal increases that would have been assessed um, over the life of the three years. Um, if we don't have this system, then in order to turn on and off machines, you'd have to manually go to each machine and, um, we have over a hundred unit events and boilers and everything in, in our system. So this allows uh, to remote access our, our items. So like when we have a snow day, we can turn our, our equipment to unoccupied mode to reduce expenses. It also allows Metro Controls to look at our system and do some proactive preventative maintenance if they're seeing problems or patterns. Okay, there's a sample resolution. 
A motion to accept the recommendation of the superintendent and approve the contract for $17,290 with Metro Controls Incorporated for web control support agreement for which funding from the 2021 general fund is authorized as presented in the attached documentation. Support. It has been moved and supported. Any discussion? <clears throat> I'll do a roll call vote. Chris. Aye. Sherry. Aye. Kyle. Aye. Angela. Aye. Jessica. Aye. Sandy. Aye. And I vote aye. Motion carries. <clears throat> Next, approval of contract with AIS for heavy equipment operating course. Mr. Walmsley. Um, this is a course that's unique to Richmond. Many other districts are um, do not obviously do not have it. And they, we actually received some students from other districts. Um, it is a course that is, uh, we have enough to run two sections of them or four hours of the day. Um, so this resolution or, or action item would allow me to sign a contract with them for the 2021 school year to continue the AIS program. There's a sample resolution. I motion to accept the recommendation of the superintendent and authorize the superintendent to enter into an agreement with AIS for the 2021 school year to offer heavy operating equipment course for which funding from the 2021 general fund is authorized and outlined in the attached documentation. That might need to be changed. Yep, we'll correct that in the final the minutes. Support. Been moved and supported. Any discussion? Hearing none, I'll do a roll call vote. All those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Motion that was a, carried. That was a roll call vote? Did it sound like a roll call vote? You said it was going to be a roll call vote. I did? Yes. <laughs> Seriously? Yeah. You did. Wow. <laughs> Wow, God, I, I apologize, Kyle. I'm cruising right along. I didn't even know I said that. It is not a roll call vote. Mr. <laughs> I then, I, I did not it answer. It is a regular vote. I. So for the regular <laughs> vote, all those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? The non-roll call vote now carries, Mr. Simmons. Thank you <laughs> for being on top of your game. Next, approval of contract with the City of Richmond for television and broadcast media course. Similarly, we've been do working with this program since 2016-17. I can't believe it's been that long now that I look at that. Um, it's for the radio, or excuse me, the television broadcasting course. Um, this would allow it two hours of the day, one hour for TV production one students, one hour for TV production two students um, to um, utilize the television production studios at the City of Richmond City Hall. Um, as well as our students um, be taught by their TV production uh, person, Jason Roberts. There's a sample resolution. I motion to. Go ahead. Okay, I motion to accept the recommendation of the superintendent and authorize the superintendent to enter into a contract for shared services with City of Richmond for the 2020-21 school year to offer television and broadcast media course for which funding from the 2020-21 general fund is authorized as presented in the attached documentation. Support. And moved and supported. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, now we've come to the point where we're going to approve our contracts for the, the renovation and addition project at the elementary. Um, do we want to hear from Jerry first or do we want to do a motion and then have Jerry speak? Let's do a motion and then he can speak. Got it, okay. Then we're going to start with the very first one. Pro proposal A, selective structured demolition to DKI International Inc. 
Okay. Motion to accept the recommendation of the superintendent and award a contract as outlined in the corresponding bid documents for proposal A, selective structure demolition for an amount not to exceed $109,900 to DKI International Incorporated. Furthermore, the board authorizes the superintendent to enter into this contractual agreement within the scope of the project on behalf of the Board of Education. Consistent with the general provisions of the board purchasing policy, the superintendent is authorized to approve change orders on the project that are within the bond budgeted amount for allowances and contingency funds. All change orders shall be reported to the Board of Education at the next regularly scheduled Board of Education meeting. This project is authorized in the application for preliminary qualification of bonds approved by the Michigan Department of Treasury and the voters of Richmond Community Schools for which funding from the 2020 school building and site bond series one is available. Support. It has been moved and supported. Is there any discussion? Jerry. So this proposal would be for the demolition required for the renovations and then also the additions, the uh, canopy that would come down at the ends of the building. DKI is a, con a demolition contractor that specializes in K-12 work that our construction has done many projects with. Any questions? Okay. I will do a roll call vote. Chris. Aye. Kyle. Aye. Angela. Aye. Sherry. Aye. Jessica. Aye. Sandy. Aye. I vote aye, motion carries. Next, proposal B, cast in place concrete foundations to no by wall ink. I motion to accept the recommendation of the superintendent and award a contract as outlined in the corresponding bid documents for proposal B, cast in place concrete foundations for an amount not to exceed $100,434 to Novi Wall Incorporated. Furthermore, the board authorizes the superintendent to enter into a contractual agreement within the scope of the project on behalf of the Board of Education. Consistent with general provisions of the board purchasing policy, the superintendent is authorized to approve change orders on the project that are within the bond budgeted amount for allowances and contingency funds. All change orders shall be reported to the Board of Education at the next regularly scheduled Board of Education meeting. This project is authorized in the application for preliminary qualification of bonds approved by the Michigan Department of Treasury and the voters of Richmond Community Schools for which funding from the 2020 School Building and Site Bond Series 1 is available. Support. It has been moved and supported. Any discussion? Jerry. This proposal is for the foundations for the additions. Uh, Novi Wall, again, is a uh, contractor that we've done uh, work with. And uh, this is for cast in place concrete foundations at the three additions. And then also at the, um, we're replacing the uh, dumpster closure. Any other questions? Okay, I will do a roll call vote. Kyle. Aye. Sherry. Aye. Jessica. Aye. Sandy. Aye. Chris. Aye. Angela. Aye. And I vote aye. Motion carries. Next, proposal C, cast and play concrete flat work to Metropolitan Concrete. I motion to accept the recommendation of the superintendent and award a contract as outlined in the corresponding bid, bid documents for proposal C, cast in place, concrete flat work for an amount not to exceed $145,295 to Metropolitan Concrete. Furthermore, the board authorizes the superintendent to enter into a contractual agreement within the scope of the project on behalf of the Board of Education. Consistent with general provisions of the board purchasing policy, the superintendent is authorized to approve change orders on the project that are within the bond budgeted amount for allowances and contingency funds. All change orders shall be reported to the Board of Education at the next regularly scheduled Board of Education meeting. This project is authorized in the application for preliminary qualification of bonds approved by the Michigan Department of Treasury and the voters of Richmond Community Schools for which funding from the 
2020 school building and site bond series one is available. Support. Jessica, was that you? Yes. Okay. It's been moved and supported. Any discussion? Jerry. So this is for the concrete flat work, also known as the slabs, uh, for the additions, the sidewalks, and the concrete paving required at the new dumpster uh, enclosure. Okay, any other questions? I'll do a roll call vote. Sherry. Aye. J Jessica. Aye. Sandy. Aye. Angela. Aye. Chris. Aye. Kyle. Aye. I vote aye. Motion carries. Next, proposal D, masonry to Davenport Masonry. I motion to accept the recommendation of the superintendent and award a contract as outlined in the corresponding bid documents for proposal D, masonry, for an amount not to exceed $849,700 to Davenport Masonry. Furthermore, the board of the board authorizes the superintendent to enter into a contractual agreement within the scope of the project on behalf of the Board of Education. Consistent with general provisions of the board purchasing policy, the superintendent is authorized to approve change orders on the project that are within the bond budgeted amount for allowances and contingency funds. All changes shall be reported to the Board of Education at the next regularly scheduled Board of Education meeting. This project is authorized in the application for preliminary qualification of bonds approved by the Michigan Department of Treasury and the Borders of Richmond Community Schools, for which funding from the 2020 School Building and Site Bonds Series 1 is available. It's been moved and supported. Any discussion? Jerry. So this proposal for masonry is your block and brick for the addition and the renovations. Davenport Masonry is one of the uh, very top masonry contractors in the state of Michigan and Hawkins done much to work with them. Any other discussion? I'll do a roll call vote. Jessica. Aye. Chris. Aye. Angela. Aye. Kyle. Aye. Sherry. Aye. Sandy. Aye. And I vote aye, motion carries. Next, proposal E, structural steel, miscellaneous steel and metal fabrications to Judd Industrial Contracting, Inc. I motion to accept to the recommend. Go ahead, Judd. Go ahead, Angela. I motion to accept the recommendation of the superintendent and award a contract as outlined in the corresponding bid documents for proposal E, structural steel, miscellaneous steel and metal fabrications for an amount not to exceed $138,950 to Judd Industrial Contracting, Inc. Furthermore, the board of authorizes the superintendent to enter into a contractual agreement within the scope of the project on behalf of the Board of Education. Consistent with the general provisions of the board purchasing policy, the superintendent is authorized to approve change orders on the project that are within the bond budgeted amount for the allowances and contingency funds. All changes orders shall be reported to the Board of Education at the next regularly scheduled Board of Education meeting. This project is authorized in the application for preliminary qualification of bonds approved by the Michigan Department of Treasury and the voters of Richmond Community Schools, for which funding from the 2020 School Building and Site Bond Series 1 is available. Of course. Is that you, Chris? Yes. Okay. It's been moved and supported. Any discussion? Jerry? So proposal E is what would sometimes be referred to as red iron structural steel. So those are the bar joists, the things that hold the roof up. Uh, and then all the miscellaneous angle iron that goes in the wall to keep the building standing up. Uh, Judd Industrial is a contractor we've worked with on other schools. Any other questions? Hearing none, I'll do a roll call vote. Angela. Aye. Chris. Aye. Sandy. Aye. Kyle. Aye. Jessica. Aye. Sherry. Aye. And I vote aye, motion carries.
Next, Proposal F, Carpentry and Millwork to Wally Kosorski and Company, Inc. I motion to accept the recommendation of the superintendent and award a contract as outlined in the corresponding bid documents for Proposal F, Carpentry and Millwork for an amount not to exceed $191,910 to Wally Kosorski and Company, Inc. Furthermore, the board authorizes the superintendent to enter in a contractual agreement within the scope of the project on behalf of the Board of Education. Consistent with the general provisions of the board purchasing policy, the superintendent is, is authorized to approve change orders on the project that are within the bond budgeted amount for allowances and contingency funds. All change orders shall be reported to the Board of Education at the next regularly scheduled Board of Education meeting. This project is authorized in the application for preliminary qualification of bonds approved by the Michigan Department of Treasury and the voters of Richmond Community Schools for which funding from the 2020 School Building and Site Bonds Series 1 is available. Support. Support. Angela. Okay, it has been moved and supported. Any discussion? Jerry. Proposal F, carpentry and millwork, is for basically your, your woodwork items that are, that are uh, in, in the finishes of the, of the building. And then also they cover, they cover a lot of the other items installed by carpenters. Uh, you'll see doors, frames, and hardware in their scope. They're not supplying them, but they're doing the install of those uh, in, in walls. And uh, this, this is a carpentry contractor, Wally Kozorski, that's done many projects with us in the K-12 market. Thank you. Any other questions? I'll do a roll call vote. Jessica. Jessica. Looks like she's frozen. It sure does, doesn't it? Um, all right, let's hold on just a minute. So we'll give her a minute to get back on. Yep, she's she's getting back on right now. Mr. Wamsley, you might want to look at your uh, cell phone. And Jess will need to be unmuted. Okay. All right. Jessica, we're back. We're about ready to do a uh, vote on the motion that you just did. So um, I'm looking, this is the carpentry and millwork to Wally Kosorski and Company, Inc. Your okay. vote? Aye. Angela? Aye. Kyle. Aye. Chris. Aye. Sherry. Aye. Sandy. Aye. And I vote aye. Motion carries. Next, going to move to Proposal G, roofing and metal wall panels to ESCO roofing and sheet metal. I motion to accept the recommendation of the superintendent and award a contract as outlined in the corresponding bid documents for Proposal G, roofing and metal wall panels, for an amount not to exceed $343,800 to ESCO roofing and sheet metal. Furthermore, the board authorizes the superintendent to enter into the contractual agreement within the scope of the project on behalf of the Board of Education. Consistent with general provisions of the board purchasing policy, the superintendent is authorized to approve change orders on the project that are within the bond budgeted amount for allowances and contingency funds. All change, change orders shall be reported to the Board of Education at the next regularly scheduled Board of Education meeting. This project is authorized in the application for preliminary qualifications of bonds 
approved by Michigan Department of Treasury and the voters of Richmond Community Schools, for which funding from the 2020 School Building and Site Bonds Series 1 is available. Support. Okay, it has been moved and supported. Any discussion, Jerry? So this is your flat roof and then the metal wall panels will be going on the canopies of the additions. Uh, Esco roofing is uh, a roofer that we've done a lot of K-12 work with. Any other questions? I'll do a roll call vote. Chris? Aye. Sherry? Aye. Kyle? Aye. Sandy? Aye. Angela? Aye. Jessica? Aye. And I vote aye, motion carries. Next, proposal H, glass and glazing storefront, aluminum slash FRP doors to Madison Heights Glass Company, Inc. I motion to accept the recommendation of the superintendent and award a contract as outlined in the corresponding bid documents for proposal H, glass and glazing storefront, aluminum FRP doors for an amount not to exceed $193,375 to Madison Heights Glass Company, Inc. Furthermore, the board authorizes the superintendent to enter into a contractual agreement within the scope of the project on behalf of the Board of Education. Consistent with general provisions of the board purchasing policy, the superintendent is authorized to approve change orders on the project that are within the bond budgeted amount for allowances and contingency funds all change orders shall be reported to the Board of Education at the next regularly scheduled Board of Education meeting. This project is authorized in the application for preliminary qualification of bonds approved by the Michigan Department of Treasury and the voters of Richmond Community Schools, for which funding from the 2020 School Building and Site Bonds Series 1 is available. Support. Been moved and supported. Any discussion? Jerry. So proposal H is for what you would classically think of doors and windows. So the entrances and the windows of the building, anything made of aluminum, and then also the glass that goes into the other uh, hollow metal door frames and wood door frame, uh, doors. Uh, Madison Heights Glass is actually the contractor under contract to do the high school work. Uh, part of the program that was approved earlier uh, for the safety bond. Uh, so they, they are familiar with the district. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, I'll do roll call vote. Sherry? Aye. Chris? Aye. Angela? Aye. Kyle? Aye. Jessica? Aye. Sandy? Aye. I vote aye. Motion carries. Next. Proposal I, HM and wood doors, frames, and hardware to LaForce, Inc. I motion to accept the recommendation of the superintendent and award a contract as outlined in the corresponding bid documents for Proposal I, HM and wood doors, frames, and hardware for an amount not to exceed $91,165 to LaForce, Inc. Furthermore, the board authorizes the superintendent to enter into a contractual agreement within the scope of the project on behalf of the Board of Education. Consistent with general provisions of the board purchasing policy, the superintendent is authorized to approve change orders on the project that are within the bond budgeted amount for allowances and contingency funds. All changes orders shall be reported to the Board of Education at the next regularly scheduled Board of Education meeting. This project is authorized in the application for preliminary qualification of bonds approved by the Michigan Department of Treasury and the voters of Richmond Community Schools for which funding from the 2020 School Building and Site Bonds Series 1 is available. Support. Okay, it was moved and supported. Any discussion? Jerry. So proposal I is uh, supply of those door frames and, and doors that are installed by the carpenter contractor. It, uh, this is specifically uh, done this way so that we can order those doors as quickly as possible. So that's why this is a one bid section that is material only uh, that we do by direct. Thank you. Any other questions? I'll do a roll call vote. Kyle? Aye. Jessica? Aye. Sherry? Aye. Sandy? Aye. Chris? Aye. Angela? Aye. And I vote aye. Motion carries. Next, Proposal J. 
uh, gypsum wall assemblies to acoustic ceilings and partition company. A motion to accept the recommendation of the superintendent and award a contract as outlined in the corresponding bid documents for Proposal J, gypsum wall assemblies for an amount not to exceed 86920 to Acoustic Ceiling and Partition Company. Furthermore, the board authorizes the superintendent to enter in a contractual agreement within the scope of the project on behalf of the Board of Education. Consistent with the general provisions of the board purchasing policy, the superintendent is authorized to approve change orders on the project that are within the bond budgeted amount for allowances and contingency funds. All change orders shall be reported to the Board of Education at the next regularly scheduled Board of Education meeting. This project is authorized in the application for preliminary qualifications of bonds approved by the Michigan Department of Treasury and the voters of Richmond Community Schools for which funding from the 2020 School Building and Site Bonds Series 1 is available. Or has been moved and supported. Any discussion? Jerry. So this is uh, typically what you would refer to as drywall, uh, the gypsum board assemblies. So it's a drywall and metal studs. Uh, acoustic ceiling and partition is a, a long-standing drywall contractor in the area that we've done many schools with. Any other questions or discussion? I will be abstaining from this vote due to a family member working for ACP. Okay. I'm going to do a roll call vote. Jessica. Aye. Kyle. Aye. Angela. Aye. Sandy. Aye. Sherry. Aye. And I vote aye. Chris. Abstain. Okay. Motion carries. Proposal K, hard tile to Micheludi Brothers, Inc. I motion to accept the recommendation of the superintendent and award a contract as outlined in the corresponding bid documents for proposal K, hard tile, for an amount not to exceed $44,100 to Micheludi Brothers, Inc. Furthermore, the board authorizes the superintendent to enter into a contractual agreement within the scope of the project on behalf of the Board of Education. Consistent with general provisions of the board purchasing policy, the superintendent is authorized to approve change orders on the project that are within the bond budgeted amount for allowances and contingency funds. All changes orders shall be reported to the Board of Education at the next regularly scheduled Board of Education meeting. This project is authorized in the application for preliminary qualification of bonds approved by the Michigan Department of Treasury and the voters of Richmond Community Schools, for which funding from the 2020 School Building and Site Bonds Series 1 is available. Support. Support. Okay, it has been moved and supported. Any discussion? Jerry. So uh, the hard tile is basically your ceramic uh, wall and floor tile. Uh, this Michaludi Brothers, again, was a, a long-standing contractor. We've done many, many projects with many K-12 projects. Thank you. Michaludi Brothers, I apologize for not saying their name correctly. Nope, I, gave no it my best, I gave it my best <laughs> shot. And then I followed you. You did. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'm going to do a roll call vote. Kyle. Aye. Sherry. Aye. Sandy. Aye. Jessica. Aye. Angela. Aye. Chris. Aye. And I vote aye. Motion carries. Next, acoustic work to acoustic ceilings and partitions. I motion to accept the recommendations of the superintendent and award a contract as outlined in the corresponding bid documents for the proposal L acoustic work for an amount not to exceed $162,531 to acoustic ceiling and partition. Furthermore, the board authorizes the superintendent to enter into a contractual agreement within the scope of the project on behalf of the Board of Education. Consistent with general provisions of the board purchasing policy, the superintendent is authorized to approve change orders on the project that are within the board budget amount for allowances and contingency funds. All change, changes orders shall be reported to the Board of Education at the next regularly scheduled Board of Education meeting. This project is authorized in the application for the preliminary qualifications of bonds approved by the Michigan Department of Treasury and the voters of Richmond Community Schools, 
for which funding from the 2020 School Building and Site Bond Series 1 is available. Support. Support. It's been moved and supported. Any discussion? Jerry. So uh, this is for basically your acoustic ceiling tile and grid uh, that you see in every classroom and most of the corridors of schools. Acoustic ceiling and partition, uh, long-standing contractor in the K-12. Thank you. Any other discussion? I will again be abstaining due to a family member being uh, working for ACP. Okay, I'm gonna do a roll call vote. Angela. Aye. Jessica. Aye. Sherry. Aye. Sandy. Aye. Kyle. Aye. And I vote aye. Chris. Abstain. Motion carries. Next. Resilient Flooring and Carpet to Shock Brothers Flooring Coverings, Inc. I motion to accept the recommendation of the superintendent and award a contract as outlined in the corresponding bid documents for Proposal M, Resilient Flooring and Carpet for an amount not to exceed $303,500 to Shock Brothers Flooring Incorporated. Furthermore, the board authorizes the superintendent to enter into a contractual agreement within the scope of the project on behalf of the Board of Education. Consistent with general provisions of the board purchasing policy, the superintendent is authorized to approve change orders on the project that are within the bond budgeted amount for allowances and contingency funds. All change orders shall be reported to the Board of Education at the next regularly scheduled Board of Education meeting. This project is authorized in the application for preliminary qualification of bonds approved by the Michigan Department of Treasury and the voters of Richmond Community Schools for which funding from the 2020 School Building and Site Bond Series 1 is available. Support. It has been moved and supported. Any discussion? Jerry. So uh, proposal M is for your basically uh, resilient and carpet floors. So these are all the floors in the classrooms. Uh, these are the, the either the LVT or VCT floors and carpeting. Uh, Shock Brothers, again, another long-standing contractor in the K-12 market. Thank you. Any other questions? I will do a roll call. Sherry. Aye. Jessica. Aye. Sandy. Aye. Kyle. Aye. Chris. Aye. Angela. Aye. And I vote aye, motion carries. Next, epoxy floor repairs to GV Painting LLC. A motion to accept the recommendation of the superintendent and award a contract as outlined in the corresponding bid documents for proposal N, epoxy floor repair for an amount not to exceed $10,749 to GV Painting LLC. Furthermore, the board authorizes the superintendent to enter into a contractual agreement within the scope of the project on behalf of the Board of Education. Consistent with general provisions of the board purchasing policy, the superintendent is authorized to approve change orders on the project that are within the bond budgeted amount for allowances, allowances and contingency funds. All change orders shall be reported to the Board of Education at the next regularly scheduled Board of Education meeting. This project is authorized in the application for preliminary qualification of bonds approved by the Michigan Department of Treasury and the voters of Richmond Community Schools for which funding from the 2020 School Building and Site Bonds Series 1 is available. Support. It has been moved and supported. Any discussion? Jerry. So this is uh, for the bathroom floors where we are doing some work. This will repair the epoxy uh, coating and uh, this uh, contractor GV painting, although uh, is new to us, we have vetted them uh, through their bonding company and they have done K-12 work in the area uh, and uh, have checked out. Thank you. Any other questions? Hearing none, I'll do a roll call vote. Kyle. Aye. Chris. Aye. Angela. Aye. Sherry. Aye. Jessica. Aye. Sandy. Aye. And I vote aye. Motion carries. Next. Painting to GV Painting, LLC. A motion to accept the recommendation of the superintendent and award a contract as outlined in the corresponding bid documents for proposal O, 
Yes. Being for an amount not to exceed $93,577 to GV Painting LLC. Furthermore, the board authorizes the superintendent to enter into the contractual agreement within the scope of the project on behalf of the Board of Education. Consistent with the general provisions of the board purchasing policy, the superintendent is authorized to approve change orders on the project that are within the scope, uh, that are within the bond budgeted amount for allowances and funds. All change orders shall be reported to the Board of Education at the next regularly scheduled Board of Education meeting. This project is authorized in the application for preliminary qualification of bonds approved by the Michigan Department of Treasury and the voters of Richmond Community Schools for which funding from the 2020 school building and site bond series one is available. Support. It has been moved and supported. Any discussion? Jerry. So this is for the painting, basically walls, stores, exposed ceilings of, of the uh, building in addition to uh, and renovations, GV painting has been vetted. Thank you. Any other questions? Hearing none, I'll do a roll call vote. Chris? Aye. Jessica? Aye. Angela? Aye. Sandy? Aye. Sherry? Aye. Kyle? Aye. And I vote aye. Motion carries. Next, visual display surfaces to Sick Jan products. I motion to recommendation the superintendent award a contract as outlined in the corresponding bid documents for proposal P visual display surfaces for an amount not to exceed fifteen thousand five hundred twenty-two dollars to Sig Jan products. Furthermore, the board authorizes the superintendent to enter into a contractual agreement within the scope of the project on behalf of the Board of Education. Consistent with the general provisions of the board purchasing policy, the superintendent is authorized to approve change orders on the project that are within the bond budgeted amount for allowances and contingency funds. All change orders shall be reported to the Board of Education at the next regularly scheduled Board of Education meeting. This project is authorized in the application for preliminary qualification of bonds approved by the Michigan Department of Treasury and the voters of Richmond Community Schools for which funding from the 2020 school building and site bonds series one is available. Support. Been moved and supported. Any discussion? Jerry. So this is your marker boards and tack boards. Uh, Sig Jan again is a, a, a well-known uh, contractor in this, in this field. Thank you. Any other questions? Hearing none, I'll do a roll call. Jessica. Aye. Sherry. Aye. Sandy. Aye. Chris. Aye. Kyle. Aye. Angela. Aye. And I vote aye. Motion carries. Next, signage to DMP Sign Company. I motion to accept the recommendation of the superintendent and award a contract as outlined in the corresponding bid documents for proposal Q, signage accessories for an amount not to exceed $7,000 to DMP Sign Company. Furthermore, the board authorizes the superintendent to enter into a contractual agreement within the scope of the project on behalf of the Board of Education. Consistent with general provisions of the board purchasing policy, the superintendent is authorized to approve change orders on the project that are within the bond budgeted amount for allowances and contingency funds. All changes Changes orders shall be reported to the Board of Education at the next regularly scheduled Board of Education meeting. This project is authorized in the application for preliminary qualification of bonds approved by the Michigan Department of Treasury and the voters of Richmond Community Schools for which funding for from the 2020 school building and site bond series one is available. Support. It has been moved and supported. Any discussion? Jerry. So this is for the signage that's required for your, your uh, rooms on the additions and then any of the new signs that we're putting in the renovation. Uh, DMP you. is a company we've done work with. Margaret, Thank just, you. A, just a quick statement. Normally, because of the dollar value, this wouldn't have come to the board because it's under $10,000. But because it's dealing with the bond, I felt it Correct. necessary that you know, we're, we're, we're very transparent with the public in how those bond dollars are spent. Correct. Anybody else? 
Hearing none, I'll do a roll call. Sherry? Aye. Jessica? Aye. Sandy? Aye. Angela? Aye. Chris? Aye. Kyle? Aye. And I vote aye. Motion carries. Next, institutional casework to Architectural Systems Group, LLC. I motion to accept the recommendation of the superintendent and award a contract as outlined in the corresponding bid documents for proposal S, institutional casework for an amount not to exceed $170,510 to Architectural Systems Group. LLC. Furthermore, the board author authorizes the superintendent to enter into a contractual agreement within the scope of the project on behalf of the Board of Education. Consistent with general provisions of the board purchasing policy, the superintendent is authorized to approve change orders on the project that are within the bond budgeted amount for allowances and contingency funds. All changes Changes orders shall be reported to the Board of Education at the next regularly scheduled Board of Education meeting. This project is authorized in the application for preliminary qualifications of bonds approved by the Michigan Department of Treasury and the voters of the Richmond Community Schools, for which funding from the 2020 School Funding and Site Bond Series 1 is available. Support. Moved and supported. Any discussion? Jerry. So this is for your classroom cabinets. Uh, ASG, or Architectural Systems Group, is a, is a well-known institutional case for contractors that we've worked with in the past. Thank you. Any other questions? Hearing none, I'll do a roll call. Angela? Aye. Kyle? Aye. Sherry? Aye. Sandy? Aye. Jessica? Aye. Chris? Aye. And I vote aye, motion carries. Mr. Walmsley, before we go on, was there no R? No, R was the removable partition wall. That was the partition? That we, yeah. Okay. Yes. So okay. Holding on that one. Okay. Thank you for that clarification. Next, plumbing to contrast mechanical. I motion to accept the recommendation of the superintendent and award a contract as outlined in the corresponding bid documents for proposal T plumbing for an amount not to exceed 199,000 to contract mechanical, or excuse me, contrast mechanical. Furthermore, the board authorizes the superintendent to enter in a contractual agreement within the scope of the project on behalf of the Board of Education. Consistent with the general provisions of the board purchasing policy, the superintendent is authorized to approve change orders on the project that are within the bond budgeted amount for allowances and contingency funds. All change orders shall be reported to the Board of Education at the next regularly scheduled Board of Education meeting. This project is authorized in the application for preliminary qualification of bonds approved by the Michigan Department of Treasury and the voters of Richmond Community Schools for which funding from the 2020 School Building and Site Bonds Series 1 is available. Or Been moved and supported. Any discussion? Jerry. So contrast mechanical uh, is being recommended for the plumbing, uh, which uh, is basically all the underground inside the building, uh, uh, water supply to the six faucets, uh, toilets, and the addition and renovation. Uh, contrast does have uh, a foreman that works in the district and he will be working on this project. Thank you. Any other questions? Hearing none, I'll do a roll call. Jessica. Aye. Chris? Aye. Angela? Aye. Kyle? Aye. Sandy? Aye. Sherry? Aye. And I vote aye, motion carries. Next, HVAC mechanical to contrast mechanical. Motion I motion to to, go ahead. I motion to accept the recommendation of the superintendent and award a contract as outlined in the corresponding bid documents for proposal U. HVAC mechanical for the amount not to exceed $1,380,000 to contrast mechanical. Furthermore, the board authorizes the superintendent to enter into a contractual agreement within the scope of the project on behalf of the Board of Education. Consistent with general provisions of the board purchasing policy, the superintendent is authorized to approve change orders on the project that are within the 
bond budgeted amounts for allowances and contingency funds. All change changes orders shall be reported to the Board of Education at the next regularly scheduled Board of Education meeting. This project is authorized in the application for preliminary qualification of bonds approved by the Michigan Department of Treasury and the voters of Richmond Community Schools for which funding from the 2020 School Building and Site Bond Series 1 is available. Support. It has been moved and supported. Any discussion? Jerry? So this is the largest dollar amount. This is all of your HVAC air conditioning. Uh, and this is again, Contrast Mechanical, who is a Cone County contractor and does a tremendous amount of K-12 work. Thank you. Any other questions? Hearing none, I'll do a roll call. Sherry? Aye. Jessica? Aye. Sandy? Aye. Kyle? Aye. Angela? Aye. Chris? Aye. And I vote aye. Motion carries. Next, electrical to Sawyer Services, Inc. Motion to accept the recommendation of the superintendent and award a contract as outlined in the corresponding bid documents for proposal V, electrical, for an amount not to exceed $882,700 to Sawyer Services, Inc. Furthermore, the board authorizes the superintendent to enter into a contractual agreement within the scope of the project on behalf of the Board of Education. Consistent with general provisions of the board purchasing policy, the superintendent is authorized to approve change orders on the project that are within the bond budgeted amount for allowances and contingency funds. All change orders shall be reported to the Board of Education at the next regularly scheduled Board of Education meeting. This project is authorized in the application for preliminary qualification of bonds approved by the Michigan Department of Treasury and the voters of Richmond Community Schools, for which funding from the 2020 School Building and Site Bonds Series 1 is available. Support. Been moved and supported. Any discussion? Jerry. So Sawyer Services, they're just up the road in Gratiot. They're a local Macomb County contractor. We are working with them currently in the New Haven District. Uh, they are being proposed for the electrical and public address, fire alarm and clock system, and the addition and renovations. Thank you. Any other questions? Hearing none, I'll do a roll call. Kyle. Aye. Chris. Aye. Angela. Aye. Sandy. Aye. Jessica? Aye. Sherry? Aye. And I vote aye. Motion carries. Next, Site Work and Utilities to Telto Contracting, Inc. I motion to accept the recommendation of the superintendent and award a contract as outlined in the corresponding bid documents for Proposal W, Site Work and Utilities for an amount not to exceed $140,000 to Telto Contracting Incorporated. Furthermore, the board authorizes the superintendent to enter into a contractual agreement within the scope of the project on behalf of the Board of Education. Consistent with the general provisions of the board purchasing policy, the superintendent is authorized to approve change orders on the project and that are within the bond budgeted amount for allowances and contingency funds. All change orders shall be reported to the Board of Education at the next regularly scheduled Board of Education meeting. This project is authorized in the application for preliminary qualifications of bonds approved by the Michigan Department of Treasury and the voters of Richmond Community Schools, for which funding from the 2020 School Building and Site Bonds Series 1 is available. Support. It has been moved and supported. Any discussion? Other than um, I will be abstaining from this vote as this is a family business. Uh, Jerry. Yes, I do want to clarify that this was uh, uh, duly noted on the familiar disclosure statement and that was appropriately handled. Uh, Telto contracting is being proposed for the site utilities and the dirt work basically uh, is what this uh, site work is. So building the building pads, uh, moving the utilities that need to be relocated for the additions and any of the reestablishment of the, the landscaping uh, grass areas as we're completing the project. Thank you. Any other questions? Excuse me, I'll do a roll call. Chris? Aye. Jessica? Aye. Sandy? Aye. 
Sherry. Aye. Angela. Aye. Kyle. Aye. And I abstain, motion carries. Next and last, vinyl coated chain link fence and gates to RMD Holdings Limited. I motion to accept the recommendation of the superintendent and award a contract as outlined in the corresponding bid documentation for proposal X vinyl coated chain link fence and gates for an amount not to exceed $13,925 to RMD Holding LTD, DBA Nationwide Construction Group. Furthermore, the board authorizes the superintendent to enter into a contractual agreement within the scope of the project on behalf of the Board of Education. Consistent with the general provisions of the board purchasing policy, the superintendent is authorized to approve change orders on the project that are within the bond budget amount for allowances and contingency funds. All changes orders shall be reported to the Board of Education at the next regularly scheduled Board of Education meeting. This project is authorized in the application for preliminary qualifications of bonds approved by the Michigan Department of Treasury and the voters of Richmond Community Schools for which funding from the 2020 School Building and Site Bond Series 1 is available. Support. It has been moved and supported. Any discussion? Jerry. Okay, so this is, there's a little fencing that's going around a condensing unit, uh, but also this is the temporary fencing that will be required to keep the students safe from the construction. So uh, this is actually uh, a local contractor who is doing the fencing work on the, the stadium. Uh, so the last two, I should have mentioned, this is kind of like baseball. We're batting last with the home teams. Uh, so they, they came up in the last two selections, but uh, uh, R&B Holdings is, is a company that we've done many projects with. Thank you. Any other questions? Hearing none, I'll do a roll call. Angela. Aye. Jessica. Aye. Sherry. Aye. Sandy. Aye. Chris. Aye. Kyle. Aye. And I vote aye. Motion carries. Jerry, thank you very much for this, for your work and helping get this all together so that we can begin this amazing work that we're gonna be doing here in the next year or so. Thank you. My pleasure and, and thank you all. That was, uh, I thought I needed a glass of water. I know you all do, so <laughs> good, good work. <laughs> thank you. Okay, moving on. Uh, approval of administrative layoff resolution. A motion to approve the attached resolution and lay off the administrator indicated as outlined in the attached resolution. Support. It has been moved and supported. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Finally, approval of school funding budget shortfall resolution to the United States Congress. Um, this is a resolution that um, several school districts are doing. I don't know if it's exactly this resolution, Mr. Walmsley, but similar, looking for um, just letting our representatives know that we're not happy with where we're at and we sure would like some help from the people who can give it to us. Um, so there is a sample resolution that was given. Kyle? Whereas in March 2020, Michigan announced the first case within our state of the coronavirus disease, causing the governor to declare a state of emergency under her powers in the Michigan Constitution. And whereas in response to this emergency, after Michigan school districts were required to cancel in-person learning, school, district, school districts have risen to the challenge by being innovative and focused on their unique needs, providing distance learning for all Michigan students. And whereas the COVID-19 pandemic has created tremendous uncertainty on how to provide quality education while maintaining safe conditions for both staff and students, causing districts to face new expenses and challenges for the upcoming school year, including providing personal projection equipment, 
creating new health screening procedures, increased cleaning and sanitation costs, reorganization of learning spaces to accommodate social distancing, and expanded access to school-based mental health services for the social emotional well-being of our students. And whereas both the state and national economies have suffered greatly as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, which has dramatically reduced state and local revenue and placed enormous pressure on the state budget, including the school aid fund, which is predicted to be more than 1 billion per year below previous estimates for the current 2019-2020 school year and upcoming 2020-2021 school year. And whereas due to falling revenues, local school districts face severe budget shortfalls for the current 2019-20 fiscal year, which ends June 30th, 2020, and the upcoming 2021 school year, including a, a potential untenable proration cut of at least $650 per student, which equates to a reduction of over $1.1 million for Richmond Community Schools. With a total operating budget of around $14 million, this reduction will be catastrophic to the organization, making it extraordinarily difficult to provide high quality education, access to technology, and safety for both students and staff. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Richmond Community School District supports the passage of less legislation by the U.S. Congress appropriating needed funds to be distributed to states and local districts with maximum flexibility to fill budget gaps during this state of emergency. And be it further resolved, the Richmond Community Schools District urges congressional action to provide additional funding for the highly success, successful E-rate program, which helps schools ensure connectivity for online learning. And be it further resolved that a copy of this resolution shall be transmitted to our governor and to all members of the U.S. House of Representatives and Senate representing the families in our district as well as our state representatives. Adopted by the Board of Education of Richmond Community School District, Macomb and St. Clair Counties, Michigan, at their regular meeting thereof held this 22nd day of June 2020. Support been moved and supported. Thank you, Kyle. <laughs> any, is there any discussion? Um, I'll just leave it with this. Um, in next week, the governor is supposed to announce her return to school plan, um, which we don't know yet to the extent of the social distancing and requiring and the online learning, et cetera. Um, so this resolution is desperately needed um, to put some action at the federal level to get dollars to the schools to help them through this uh, this crisis, if you will. Absolutely. And we continue to encourage everyone out there, staff, parents, everyone, contact, contact your legislators. Um, get the message out that help needs to come from the federal government and from the state level. Help has to come. School districts, public school is important. Public education is important. So please continue to reach out to these people and let that let your voice be heard. Okay, it has been moved and supported. I will do a roll call. Kyle. Aye. Jessica. Aye. Chris. Aye. Sandy. Aye. Angela. Aye. Sherry. Aye. And I vote aye. The resolution passes. Mr. Wamsley, you're going to get this out tomorrow, correct? Yeah, I'll get our Chris's signature on it and I will get that uh, out tomorrow then. Okay, all right, thank you. Um, well, that's it folks. Uh, we are good until August. So board members, have a good month of July. Tammy, Brian, Jamie, everyone out in the viewing audience, have a good month of July. We will see you in August. We are adjourned at 8.38 p.m.